Book 40 of 2020 was I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. This book is very good, but it is weird. And what I would say is that if you're reading it and you're not liking it or you're thinking it's not for you, don't stop. Read it until the very end because a lot of the things that you think are problems with it are there for a reason. Like it's fantastic writing. When you get to the end, you realise how well written it is and how intentional every single choice in it has been. I became aware of this book because I was watching a YouTuber, I think she's called Cat uh, Paperback Dreams maybe, and she was raving about it and saying that it was good. And I read about it on Goodreads and it sounded, sounded different. I like novelty and it's quite short. So I was thinking if it's not very good, it'll be all right. But it's been made into a Netflix film and I was thinking, well, if it's a Netflix film, then it must be, it must be all right because they wouldn't have taken it on if it was like awful. So I started reading it and I must admit when I was first reading it, I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this because the relationship between two of the main characters, there's a boyfriend and girlfriend and the, the girl is thinking of ending things in the relationship and she keeps like thinking about it all the time it's quite postmodern in the way that it's written in that in that sense and it's a bit weird like the dynamic between them it feels very pretentious the conversations that they have with each other and it felt to me like those kind of conversations are not what you come by in real life the kind of the type of conversations that you would have with yourself they didn't really feel like they were what you'd have with another person and so I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know if I like this or not. The, like, the characterisation is not that great. And the female just felt very, very unrepresentative of what a female is actually like. Like, it felt like it was a really bad writing of a female. And throughout the book, there are minor things that happen that are just very subtle and unsettling because they're so minor and... It's, it's almost like the thing that happens is not what you expect to happen. It almost creates that kind of cognitive dissonance where you just a little bit like you thought it was going to be something, but it wasn't. And it was just something really minor. And I can't think of the top of my head. I could, I'm seeing in the Netflix trailer, there's a dog and the dog is like shaking itself because it's wet. But it doesn't stop shaking itself. It just keeps shaking. And she's looking at it going, that's weird. And like there's another one where, where the, the, the uh, dad cracks his neck like more times than what you would expect and it's so unsettling and Ian Reid when he's writing actually says it in the in the prose he actually says like it's the minor little things that are the most unsettling so he draws your attention to it and he does it look like there's so many instances when it happens and it's so un like it's just so freaky and weird and like it makes you realise why when you're watching films, when things happen that make you feel like on edge and like something just strange is happening. And he does it really well in writing. I've never read writing that good that makes me feel the same way as a film does when I'm watching it in that unsettling, freaky kind of way. So I'm, I'm remembering a film where... No, I can't remember what it's called. It's where she gets trapped in a fun fair and she ends up swapping with a a person that's under the ground and then they're like they like meet them and they're just like there and it's just all a bit weird. Like that's what this book makes you feel like. It does say in the description actually about being scared. And it's not that you're scared, you're just a bit on edge and you're just a bit like, what the hell is happening? Like this is so weird. And uh the prose is just really kind of intellectual. It's really, you just feeling, you feel like you're blind and you just, it's dark and you're feeling your way around and you're trying to figure out what's happening, but you're never really sure. Like the whole way through, I was like, what the hell is happening? I don't know what's happening. It's so confusing, but in a good way because you want to keep reading. You want to find out like what on earth is going on. And when you get to the end, you're like, oh my God, like I need to read it again. I mean, I haven't read it again, but I feel like I need to read it again, knowing now what I found out at the end. I thought that it was a really, really intriguing portrayal of the resultant effect of isolation on the human psyche. And so because of the bit at the end, 
that made me realise how great the writing was and how intentional it was. And that he wasn't a bad writer, he was actually a fantastic writer because he'd done it intentionally. Although maybe, no, no. I was going to say, oh, maybe he was bad and he just put that twist on the end to make it look good. But no, he's definitely been intentional. Like, just the, he's just exquisite the way it's been done because of that ending. And so this is why I would say don't give up on it and keep writing because when you get to the end, you're like, wow wow like i was just blown away at the end i was just like this guy's fantastic like he's literally thought this entire thing through and it just misleads you for so long so it's just good i would definitely recommend it i would say this is probably one of my favorite ones that i've read just because i was so surprised by it because it was so bad all the way through <laughs> that at the end i was like oh i actually really like it because it was intentionally bad if that makes sense so uh yeah i would definitely recommend this one